We use technology as a process and as a language. A mm. lot of it is really not knowing what we're making. And that, that kind of for us, when we have these successes in our process, is what we continue to follow. My name is Gabriel Dunn. I'm a Bay Area native. I um, am an audiovisual artist. And I'm Vishal Kedar. Um, I'm based out of New Delhi, India. Um, primarily working with sculpture and video. Vishal and I met uh, when I was doing my undergrad at UCLA in the Design and Media Arts Department while uh, Vishal was working on his master's. And uh, we connected at that time, but it wasn't until about a decade later that we started producing work together. The shift that we were imagining and wanting to work with vis-a-vis -vis sculpture was very specific. The how can we take the time-based media-ness of technology and then somehow implant it or overlay it with a certain traditional idea of sculpture. And by doing that, what is it that we are going to achieve in terms of an experience? Nag is a sculpture that is installed as if it's growing out of the space. There are projection map patterns called quasi-crystals that are mapped to various parts of the shape that bring the form alive. Nog has a mass and a objectness. Another layer is a projected skin. What happens largely with sculpture is that there is a staticness to it. You are always with the material that you are with at that particular point in time. And in this case, there is a certain virtuality. It's like a magic trick. The skin is never constant. The skin is always changing. It's a random algorithm. So that affects the experience in a way where you're, you're never going to see the piece in the same way, uh, depending on when you see it. That's a psychological specificity. And I think that is where it sort of moves a little further into the sculptural genre. The first time that we were installing this in India, in New Delhi, the neighborhood kids used to just sort of come and hang. They would run to me and ask me what it was, what it was, what it was. And I would always say that, make of it what you want to. Then finally one day, the group came and said, we feel that this is a wish-fulfilling sea serpent, which has taken refuge in this space and will be gone sometime soon. The wish-fulfilling sea serpent got the word Nag. Once it had the title, we knew that this is what it was. It is a shapeshifter. Um, and it really opened the conversation for us to ask and consider how myths originate in a community and where stories come from. Looking at the program and the way the museum is functioning, that there's, there's a certain idea of embracing fluidity. Things are not static. Uh, things are constantly in the flow. Uh, that's also a very cultural thing for the Jewish people. I think that them embracing this idea connects the Nag to it. A fluid object moving through a fluid cultural space that resonates very, very deeply with the work. 